Good afternoon. My name is uh, Jacob Simonsen. I'm the proud CEO of uh, ARC in uh, Copenhagen, the waste to energy plant uh, with, uh, you might know, uh, with, uh, with the skiing uh, slope on top. Uh, I'm very happy to be here to talk to you today about uh, carbon capture and storage in, uh, in Copenhagen. But firstly, uh, the big why. Why are we actually here? We are here not to uh, produce energy. We produce vast amounts of energy, but this is not the reason why we are here. We're actually here to provide waste management solutions for the citizens of Copenhagen and the surrounding municipalities. We're here because every day uh, people live their lives and, uh, and use a lot of products and, and services that produces waste and it is our task to treat the waste in the best possible way. That means with minimum uh, emissions of, uh, of uh, dangerous substances and also with the minimal emissions of CO2. I'm sure you all are aware uh, that, uh, that the climate agenda is on the rise. Uh, there's just been published a, a new report from the IPCC uh, and uh, as you can see it says that, that climate is a huge problem and it keeps on getting worse and we need to do something and we need to do something now. This is not a picture of Bangladesh. This is actually a picture from Germany, Rhein-Westfalen, this, uh, this summer, uh, or last summer, uh, and it just shows that, that the, the climate issue is moving even closer to us Europeans every single day. So we need to, to do something about it. Uh, in the IPPC uh, report, uh, you can actually also see, uh, you see on the furthest uh, left uh, on your screen, uh, what is needed to be done if everybody uh, acts uh, the best possible way. And on the very right side of the screen, you can see uh, what will happen if, uh, if all citizens of the world uh, acts and wants to get access to, to all kinds of products and services as we actually have today. And uh, I don't know uh, where you think we'll be, but it is probably most, most likely that we'll be in a scenario uh, on the right rather than on the left. And if we are that, we actually need carbon capture and, and storage in a pretty vast scale. It is also to say that the emissions uh, in, the, in the developed countries and in the world have been on the rise very sharply uh, the last uh, few decades. From the 1960s to now, you can see there's a huge rise. And uh, the point is actually that uh, what we need to do is that we need to decrease the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere at an even faster race, uh, rate than what we actually uh, did when we, when we developed. So we need to develop in the other direction even faster than where we came from. That's a, a huge task. And this is uh, if we do everything that, uh, that, that we could and everything that, that, is, uh, that is needed. Uh, and this is actually uh, the amount of carbon capture and storage we need if the world will develop in the way that we actually uh, is most probable. So we need huge amounts of carbon capture and, and storage in the, in the future. The Danish targets are quite substantial, uh, very ambitious. We have uh, national targets uh, saying that we need to have a carbon neutral society in 2050. A few years back, uh, that was very progressive. Now it's, uh, it's very mainstream. It might not be that mainstream that uh, we have a target in 2030, about 70% CO2 reductions compared with the 1990. And we also actually have a 2025 target uh, saying that we need to reduce uh, emis uh, CO2 emissions by 50 to 54%. A new report is just out uh, from the Danish Climate Council, what we call Klimarod. Uh, that is, uh, that is an advisory body to the government, um, independent body, uh, but they're actually written into the Danish climate law. And what they say is that they, they will actually have a look at uh, the, the climate uh, actions that the government takes and they will evaluate uh, the probability whether we will reach the 70% the climate goal or not every year. This report is, is very new, it just came out uh, last week, and it says that, that uh, we're still uh, in a bit of a need uh, to get there. Uh, all the plans are not, uh, still in, uh, are not in place, we need to develop further. And the carbon capture is, uh, is actually on the, on the very uh, far right in the so-called technical potentials. 
This is also where you see that the, the, the technical potentials are what we actually need uh, to uh, develop uh, in order to, to get there. The municipality of Copenhagen is also very ambitious. They have an extremely ambitious goal to be the first climate neutral capital in the world. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, this is uh, their uh, climate roadmap uh, extending to 2025. And what you can actually see is that they lack uh, CO2 emissions about 500,000 tons. Uh, so when we in, uh, in ARC uh, came and said we have a lot of CO2 emissions that we can actually supply, uh, this is of course very interesting uh, for the municipality of Copenhagen, which is our biggest owner. Uh, we have, of course, in ARC also made climate accounts to say where can we actually, uh, where, should we, where should we focus our attention in order to get the, the, the best climate reductions. And uh, this is uh, quite clear that our, our energy uh, and our energy production is the, main, uh, is the main business area where we can actually supply uh, the maximum amount of CO2 reductions. Uh, recycling uh, and uh, collection of waste uh, does also have some potential, but it's far less. So if we need to do something, we need to focus on our, our waste to energy uh, plant. And our waste to energy plant, I think it's very uh, safe to say that in the future, uh, climate uh, will be licensed to operate. Uh, we need to, to focus on, on climate in order to treat the, the waste in the best possible way. We have very, very few emissions uh, from ARC. Uh, we have uh, probably uh, invested in the best possible technology and we have uh, far fewer emissions from our plant than, than anywhere else in, in the world. But we uh, still have a lot of CO2 coming out of the stack and that we need to, to handle like we handled uh, emissions, uh, other kinds of, of emissions in the future. This is, I think you need to get your head around just saying that this is just another kind of emissions that we need to be able to control. In ARC, uh, our potential is about 500,000 tons, where about a third of that is, uh, is fossil and two thirds is biogenic. Um, and we have made investigations uh, showing, uh, is, it, uh, is it a good idea uh, to introduce carbon capture at ARC? And uh, surprise, surprise, uh, yes it is. Uh, it doesn't matter how, uh, how the, the waste composition will actually develop. Uh, here you can see uh, this report is actually a, a life cycle analysis, also taking into account that the waste composition will change over the next coming years. Even, however, the, however the, the waste composition will change, it will still be a good idea to introduce carbon capture. And then you say, but what happens if the energy market changes and the, energy, uh, the way that you produce energy, will that change? Even if you have a total green energy production in your country, it will still be a very good idea to introduce uh, carbon capture. Uh, and this is uh, shown here. So what we have done in, in ARC is that we have invested uh, and got uh, support to introduce, uh, or, or, uh, introduce a pilot plant. And uh, that we did uh, from June last year and it's uh, still up and running. We'll have that running into March and then we will replace it by a demonstration plant, giving us the knowledge that uh, uh, how we can have continuous uh, carbon capture and we can learn a, all, a lot about the energy integration with our, our energy plant. And that is uh, the steps that we need to move on to full-scale carbon capture at ARC. And we cannot uh, reach the full-scale uh, carbon capture uh, plant without any kind of financial support, either from the, the EU Innovation Fund that we just uh, last week um, actually submitted our application and uh, another possibility is that we get uh, support from a, a Danish uh, CCS support scheme. And how does this work? Uh, if you look at the value chain, uh, we have uh, carbon capture at, uh, at ARC. We need, uh, we need some uh, intermediate storage at uh, the harbor that is very close by. And from there on, we need to sail out uh, the CO2 uh, to uh, uh, North Sea, uh, to the depleted oil fields. Uh, and it's very, uh, uh, very necessary to say that we are stressing uh, extremely much that uh, this should not, uh, this should not uh, mean enhanced oil recovery. Uh, we can only 
we can only uh, have carbon storage if it does not uh, entail uh, additional uh, carbon production. So, um, uh, and, and the financial around this, how will this work? Because of course uh, the, the storage operator will, have, uh, will, will need uh, money to, to store the CO2 in the depleted oil fields. Uh, if he, for example, comes and says, this will cost uh, me, uh, this will cost ARC 50 euros a ton, uh, then, of course, uh, the utilization guys that wants to make uh, PTX will say, uh, Jacob, uh, please come to us. We can, uh, we can uh, take your CO2 for 49 euros a ton to make uh, PTX uh, synthetic fuels uh, for ships or, or, or aircrafts or, or whatever. But is this really what will happen? Uh, maybe what will happen is that uh, that uh, uh, that offsets is uh, a bigger part of uh, of the market. Uh, so saying that uh, that um, if farmlands or cement production or hard, other hard to abate industries will have a much higher cost than we can actually uh, have to deploy uh, CO2 in the underground, then they will say we would like to to pay. Uh, to abate uh, this t CO2 emissions, uh, we would like to, instead of, uh, of uh, you paying, uh, we would like to, to pay you for the offsets. Uh, let's say they would like to pay you, uh, us, in the long run, maybe uh, uh, the ETS price, let's say it's 100 euros a ton. Uh, um, and then, of course, um, I will only give the CO2 to the storage operator if uh, the cost is less than 100 euros a ton. Uh, the economic uh, drivers for our project is that uh, for the fossil part, of course, uh, we are looking in, uh, Denmark is one of the few countries that are actually in the ETS at the moment, and we are looking into uh, to a, a future CO2 tax. Uh, we also have for our negative emissions, uh, we will probably have a, a negative tax, a support scheme, and we're also looking into this uh, offset uh, market uh, that uh, will be developing in the next few years. And that will be the basis for establishing CO2 uh, at ARC. We actually also, uh, a few, year, uh, few weeks ago, were presented with a proposal for a green tax reform in 2030. It's in the long run, but this is important for us to make uh, the decisions of uh, what we can actually uh, build at ARC. So for the fossil part, there's a CO2 tax, and as I mentioned, we're already in the ETS. So for that part, we are looking into the future with about a, uh, a financial cost of 150 euros uh, a ton if we emit CO2. This 150 euros a ton, of course, we can save that if we don't emit CO2, and that will be a huge driver, like the, the biogenic part will be 100 euros a ton, will be a huge driver to implement CO2 at ARC. And I think uh, this will uh, hopefully, uh, with hopefully some, uh, some um, CAPEX uh, support from the European uh, Innovation Fund, will make uh, this project uh, come through. Uh, we will build uh, the carbon capture uh, plant uh, very close to ARC, of course, uh, it, is, it is needed. Uh, we already have plans for that. And I think uh, I will leave it at that and say thank you very much uh, for listening uh, this morning. And I am uh, uh, looking forward to uh, participating in the debate later this afternoon. Thank you.